To make this sweet little vintage bottle, I began with a glass bottle I purchased at Michael's for, uh, well, it was $1.99, but I got 20% off. So I began by cleaning it very well with some rubbing alcohol. Normally, when painting on a non-porous surface like glass, I usually mix a little bit of baking soda in my chalk paint. However, I'm going to be decoupaging on this on both sides. And, well, baking soda adds a bit of a texture, so I wanted it fairly smooth. So I just used plain white Waverly chalk paint. Let it dry, and now I'm very lightly sanding any little bumps and bubbles. Now these two little hearts came from downloads from Etsy that I printed on um, rice paper that's made for a laser printer. I get that from Amazon. I will link that in the description box below. And now I'm just using Mod Podge to decoupage on my little heart pictures on both sides of the bottle. The topper on this bottle was just a shadow little cork thing and I wanted it to be more decorative. So at Hobby Lobby I always wait until they have their doorknobs uh, accessories half price and that's what that is. It's a little wooden doorknob that I uh, removed the bolt that was in the bottom of it and then just used some super glue to glue it to the cork. After the glue set up, I then painted the cork a dark brown because I'm going to be adding some white on the top, uh, really over the whole bottle, to kind of simulate the coloring there of that topper. So now what I'm doing is adding some embellishments using air dried clay. This is a small mold that I got from Amazon. It's really more for, I think, cake fondant, frosting, things like that. But I did use air dry clay in it, and I will link uh, in the description box that mold as well. After attaching the little embellishments at the top and the bottom of the heart, I wanted to connect the, the two together. And so I decided to use the little pearls um, from the IOD Acanthus scroll. I especially like these because they go from large to small and I thought that would add some interest to it. I will say it's a little hard to work with the little bitty tiny ones, but it's doable. So I glued those on again also with tight bond, quick and thick. Using yet another small mold that I purchased from Amazon, I want to decorate the sides of the bottle um, because this little thing is supposed to look fairly ornate, very vintage, like an old perfume bottle.
And again, using the pearls from the acanthus scroll mold, I'm going to attach a few of them between the two embellishments that I added on the side. Here I'm just kind of measuring and sizing up uh, so that both sides are even, kind of counting, making sure I've got the same dimensions of sizes of pearls on each side. After letting the mold set up for approximately 30 minutes or so, um, I use some sealer. Amy Howard uh, makes a matte sealer that I like that I get from Ace Hardware. And I am sealing the decoupage parts of the bottle. It doesn't take very long for the sealer to dry. So once it was completely dry, I began painting everything that was white, including the molds, with the Dixie Belle coffee bean colored chalk paint. It's the same color that I put on the bottom of the cork uh, on the lid. So I paint all the whole bottle in that color and then let it dry. To make a chunky paint that looks rather old world and very textured, I like to mix my chalk paint with salt wash. Um, it's similar to baking soda, but, but not really. The baking soda added to chalk paint just adds kind of a thickener and more of a sandy texture, but the salt wash, you can apply it pretty heavily um, and then use like a blow dryer. I use a heat gun on it um, and it will start to kind of crack. So I'm just going to let you watch here and see. I, I did about probably 90% coverage, leaving some holes here and there. And then I repeat the process. But the second time around, I use a lighter brown color. Um, I think it is the burnt umber that I used um, for the brown part but I just do layers drying in between and distressing a little bit sometimes with just a wet wipe and or sometimes with just a, a really worn out sanding sponge so I'll let you just watch the process here I saw you from across the room from I 
and again using Amy Howard's matte sealer over the entire bottle. After that dries, um, I want to add some detail to the decoupage hearts. So I'm going to do a crackle finish using Pintart's two-step crackle. With step one, you want to make sure that you're applying it at least about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Otherwise, you're just not going to get a good crackle. After step one dries, it will be clear, but it still should be tacky, so you need to check it uh, quite frequently. It really, on something this small, it just doesn't seem to take all that long, maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes, and then you want to apply step two. Now after you brush on step two, that is the point in time when you can use a hair dryer um, or a heat gun to speed dry it which also speeds up the cracking process and that doesn't take very long at all. I have two Stamperia antiquing paste products that I like to use especially um, when I've used the two-part crackle. This is the darker of the two and it is called uh, Ombra, which means shadow, patina anticante. So it's an antiquing patina. I basically just apply it with a brush and rub it in. Now, sometimes when rubbing it in those cracks, it's still not quite dark enough for me. So I will add a powder pigment, and this is Pearl X in dark brown. It has a little bit of a bronzy sheen to it as well, but I just really keep rubbing and pressing that in so I get it deeply into the crevices of the crackle so that it'll really show up. Then lastly, I want to highlight uh, certain areas, especially on the molds or any kind of relief. And I use Dixie Bell's gilding wax or paste. Uh, here I'm using a bronze and then I usually follow it also with a little bit of gold. And that's it folks. And that's how I created this beautiful vintage antique looking bottle. Get to